Hello and welcome to our month of Azure Data Bricks brought to you by Advancing Analytics. Today we're going to have a look at creating your first Databricks service, so how you actually create the Azure resource and get started with the tool itself. Before we do, it's important to understand what it is. So we've got our Databricks workspace and this is the control layer, how we access it. But actually under the hood, there's something else entirely going on. So our Databricks workspace, it creates its own resource group and it creates objects inside that resource group on our behalf. So we're not just creating that workspace, we're creating these two things, our workspace, and then behind the scenes, a managed resource group. And it'll be created with some storage and a network security group, as well as a virtual network by default. And then as we provision clusters, as we say, maybe here's a seven, eight box Spark cluster, that behind the scenes, it'll create those resources for us. So we're not just creating a workspace, we're creating the workspace and the managed resource group and giving it the ability to do everything behind the scenes. So it's important to know that because we've got these two different ideas, we have two levels of security. We've got who can do things in the actual Azure portal. So who can configure the workspace, who can add new um, managers and admins uh, to the workspace. We can have who can change the virtual network. But then on the other side, we've got people who can do things inside of Databricks. So what clusters can they see? What notebooks can they see? So we've got two levels of admin, your Azure and your workspace. Okay, so here we are in the Azure portal, and we're gonna go ahead and create a new Azure Databricks workspace. So I'm gonna go and create a new resource from scratch. We should search for Databricks, there we go. Tells us a little bit about it, and we can just hit create. Okay, we'll give the workspace a name. So this isn't the cluster name, this is the whole workspace. So advanced Databricks works, pick a subscription, and then choose a resource group, which we then give it a new one so it's entirely separate from everything else. Now this is our main resource group, not the managed one. Now location of your workspace is very important because this is where it creates the clusters. And if this is in a different region to your data, then whenever you run a query, your data is gonna have to move between regions, which has a cost and has a speed impact. So be a little bit careful where you place it. Next, we choose the pricing tier. Now I've got a couple of options here. We can do standard, premium, or trial. Standard is your run of the mill, gives you access to most things. Generally, using workbooks, querying data, you can do everything in there. Premium has a few additional features to do with security, saying which users can access different areas, which users can access different tables. That stuff is to do with premium. And then trial, if you just want to give it a go. I've also got a virtual network, so I can choose as a preview feature to inject my Databricks objects into an existing virtual network. Confusingly, I've called my virtual network Databricks, but you have to have a virtual network set up if you want to do that. So we're not gonna do that for now. Let's go ahead and create our resource. And then while it's doing that, we can have a look at the actual deployment. And you can see inside here, this is where we can get the ARM template. So if you want to do infrastructure as code, if you want to deploy Databricks programmatically, then this is where you need to go to grab what the ARM template looks like and get that description in code of how to deploy your Databricks resource. Annoyingly, they haven't quite implemented it yet, so you can have a workspace deployed and then scrape the template from there. That's coming at some point in the future. So let's speed things up a little, and then we should see the deployment work. There we go. And then we can go to that resource and have a look at our new Databricks workspace. Okay, so a couple of things in here to be aware of. So firstly, I've got that managed resource group. So this is a new resource group. I didn't name it, I didn't create it. And this is where it's gonna create any objects that Databricks needs. Secondly, I've got my Azure level access. So people who can come in and administrate that whole workspace. Now the people who are owners and contributors inside that uh, access role are automatically gonna be admins of my Databricks workspace inside it. So I click launch workspace, this comes, assigns me in, it's using Active Directory to sign me in. So you have to be an AD user to use Databricks. And there we go. That is a new workspace that has been set up. I can then start playing around, create clusters, use notebooks, and go nuts. And we'll go into some more of those details in the next session. So that's how you create your first Databricks service. Hope that was useful, and we will see you again.